If you've turned on the news recently, and maybe you have, maybe you haven't, maybe you've just been boycotting the whole news uh, cycle, I know that I've wanted to here recently, you know that United We Stand is not a really good description of where we're at in this nation or in this world at this moment. There is a lot of division and divisiveness going around. There's a whole lot of it, actually. This group against that group, and that group against this group, and these people against those people, and it's for all different reasons. And it seems like in the past year or so, we have become more divided as a nation than we have been in decades. And I don't care who you blame for the problem, and I know everybody blames everybody else. It's time that we learn to be a little bit more united and learn about some things that can bring us together instead of tearing us apart. I don't care what nation you're from. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care what color you are or what, who you voted for. I, I could care less. We can all be one in Christ Jesus. I love this time of year. It affords me a little bit more time to think than I normally do. That's because I'm sitting in a tree and I got nowhere to go. I love it. Uh, I call it tree stand therapy, but deer hunting for me is more than hunting or filling my freezer. It's, it's therapy, and I do a lot of studying, and I do a lot of praying when I'm sitting there strapped to a tree for 8 or 10 or 12 hours. I'm kind of a captive audience of the Lord's at that point. And I do a lot of reading, and I decided one day this week while I was hunting that I was going to read through the book of Galatians. And I did that while I was sitting there. And I got to chapter 3, and this verse just kind of jumped out at me and said, we need more of that in this world. And I wrote this sermon while sitting in a tree. Uh, you can do productive things sometimes when there's no phone calls or emails or just you're sitting there. And the more I got to thinking about it, the more I said, we need this in America today more than we have in a very long time, I think. This political process has shaken us to our core. It's been very bad. Not only was it bad beforehand, but you can see it's been bad afterwards. We're divided across gender lines race lines, political aisles. And we focus on all these things that keep us separated and segregated and apart instead of focusing on one thing that can bring us all together and unite the world, in fact. And it's with that in mind I want us to turn and look at Galatians chapter 3, beginning there in verse 26. There are a lot that we can learn from this, and I hope that uh, we pay attention. And I'm glad that Wayne read it for us just a moment ago. Paul said, for you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ and you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to that promise. That applies to folks who are in Christ. United, we stand this morning, and we understand when it comes to the doctrine of Christ that according to James, it has to be first pure and then peaceable. But we could use some peace today. We could use some peace on Facebook. I don't know if I ever asked for an amen before, but I almost would right there. We could use some peace on Facebook and social media in the workplaces. Even inside the church, we can need to understand that there needs to be peace and unification and all comes through Christ. Let's talk about being united for a moment. United by faith. Verse 26, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. By faith in the faith. And faith is used two different ways in the New Testament. One is the faith, the doctrinal system of faith, the gospel system of faith. And the other is our personal faith, our personal belief. 
uh, in Christ and that gospel system. Jude said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once and really once and for all delivered unto you. There is a faith that has been delivered once and for all for us, and that is the gospel system of faith. That faith that Christ died to save us, died and was resurrected that third day, and ascended into heaven and sits down at the right hand of the throne of God and gives us that opportunity to be with Him. That faith that teaches us what we need to do in order to go to heaven, that is the faith, and it is our faith in the faith that allows us all to come together in Christ. That faith is the gospel that Paul said, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you have received and wherein you stand and by which you are saved. He goes on to say what that gospel is, how he delivered, uh, how I delivered first unto you that which I also received, how Christ died for your sins and was resurrected. Third day, according to the scriptures. That's where we get the faith. It comes through study of Scripture. It comes through the Scripture that God has had delivered for us. And we can stand united upon it as the only doctrine that God has given us for uh, gospel, for salvation. Hebrews 11, 1 through 6, we're familiar with this. And I hope you'll notice several passages we use this morning I hope you're familiar with. We don't have to stir it long and hard and find obscure verses to see that we need to be Unified and we can be in Christ. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, it is the evidence of things not seen. And we see how the elders obtained a good report by it, and without it, without that faith, that trusting, expectating hope on the gospel system of God, it is impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. United we stand by faith, by the gospel system of faith, by our own unwavering faith in God that leads us to obedience of the gospel. And it is through faith and by faith that we can all be children of God. Romans 8, 16 and 17. Paul said, The Spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs and then heirs of God and joint heirs. With Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we also might be glorified together. It's through faith. Paul said, Ephesians, that by grace are we saved through faith. It is that two part system of salvation that God has given us. That we can be united and all together come as one. All can be children of God. Paul says in Ephesians 5, be therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ has also loved us, and hath given for us an offering and a sacrifice of God for a sweet-smelling savor. Every single person on the face of the planet can be a child of God. Doesn't matter who you voted for. Doesn't matter whether your candidate won or lost. Doesn't matter what color you are or where you live. Doesn't matter if you're a citizen or an officer of the law. Doesn't matter what gender you were born with. All can be children of God by faith in Christ, by active obedience. Matter of fact, we stand united by that obedience. Look at verse 27. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. We can all be child, children of God. By faith in Christ Jesus, because as many of us have been baptized into Christ, we have Put on Christ. We stand united together in Christ by obedience to His gospel. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 talks about that obedience. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, Paul says. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and they that not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the obedience of that gospel. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Romans 1, 16, Paul says that that gospel, that he is not ashamed of it, for it is the power of God unto salvation. 
If we're going to be united around something, don't be united around a political figure or some movement with people protesting in the streets. Be united around something that is the power of God unto salvation. If you're going to write something on a sign and walk down the street with it, let it be Scripture. We can be united. It is the power of God unto salvation. And God will take vengeance on those who have not obeyed the gospel. Romans 6, 3 through 6, we're familiar with that. Many of us have been baptized into Christ and put on Christ. That's Galatians chapter 3. And we see that process in Romans chapter 6. That with Christ we're buried, raised to walk in newness of life. That old man of sin and shame we have put to death and we are raised to walk in newness. We have obeyed the gospel. We have done what 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 would teach us to do. That death, the burial, and the resurrection, we see that in Romans 6. We put on Christ in that baptism. We're obedient to his gospel. And anybody that does that can be in Christ. Anyone can be in Christ. That is the beauty of the gospel. It's not just for certain people. It's for everyone. It's for the whole world. We all can be in Christ, united and complete together as one. And that's what God wants. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. We're not willing that any should perish. God wants all to come under repentance. But now that's up to you and me. God is and has given us time, and time and more time for us to get our lives right. For us to be united in Christ. He is long-suffering with us. He doesn't want anyone to perish, anyone to go to hell. He wants everyone to go to heaven. But we know that's not going to be the case. We know that Jesus said, Many, many there be which go in there at that wide and broad way which leads to destruction. Few there be that find the way to heaven, but it's open for anyone. The instructions are easy and simple to follow, but not everyone does it. Anyone can be in Christ. The times of this ignorance is recorded for us in Acts 16, or Acts 17, verse 30. God winked at it. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Now, how many people did God leave out when he said all men everywhere? No one's left out of that. God wants everybody to repent, that all men should come under repentance. That is his desire. He said his only begotten son that you and I could have that opportunity. That we could all be together and not fighting and be divisive. Probably could have preached the same sermon out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 where they were all divided. And Paul's admonition for them to stop being divided and to start being united in Christ. But I really do like the way Paul says it in Galatians chapter 3. United we stand by obedience. United we stand by sacrifice. It's the sacrifice of Christ that allows us to have these things. Verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Nationalities, social economic statuses, gender, it doesn't matter. We're all one in Christ Jesus. You know, it doesn't matter to God whether you are white or black, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are Democrat or Republican. God does not care. Christ died for all of us. And we need to remember that. James says something, and I'm going to take it somewhat out of context. He says, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. Now he's talking about uh, corrupt words and wise words pulling forth out of the same mouth. You, you can't do that. You can't have sweet and bitter from the same place. We can't have divisiveness and unity at the same time. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. One of those phrases in the King James, it sounds really wonderful. These things ought not so to be. Jesus sacrificed himself so that we could be together and not be against one another. United we stand by the sacrifice of Christ. Philippians chapter 2. A couple of decently lengthy readings here, but I think it's beneficial for us to look at those for just a moment. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, 
But he made of himself no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. One of the most concise records of what Christ did for us recorded in the New Testament. It's not the only place that we can read about His sacrifice. One of, one of the better places in the Old Testament to go is to look at Isaiah chapter 53, a Messianic chapter talking about Christ and what He would do and why He would do it for us. And it's just 12 verses, and I invite your attention there as we read it in its entirety. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form of nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, of man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and he has carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now all, lie, all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one into his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before the shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put to him grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied, and by his knowledge shall my righteous servants justify many, for he bears their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressor, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. When we look at Isaiah chapter 53, there is a wonderful picture of what Christ has done for us. From the beginning to the end, from hopelessness to hope, abounding in that one chapter. By the sacrifice of Jesus, we can all stand united together. Because he bore the transgressions, of many by his stripes we are healed we can all stand and have freedom from sin america is a place of great freedom and i appreciate that so much every time we gather together without fear of persecution where i can speak my mind under the protection of the constitution of the united states i, I appreciate that and i know not everyone in the world has that freedom and not everybody can come and and come to america come to this great nation and become a citizen. And I understand there are hindrances to that. It's distance and it's time and it's money and it's... Not everybody can enjoy the freedoms that we do and I hope that we count that our many blessings this Thanksgiving and all throughout the year. But everybody can come to Christ. Everyone can have freedom from sin. No matter where they're at in the world or how much money they have or where they're at, they can have freedom from sin. We all can have freedom of sin. Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? That was that thought in the first century. Well, if God's grace and His forgiveness can cover all of my sins, well, I'm just going to sin as much as I can so people can see God's forgiveness. Paul just shakes his head. He says, God forbid you should do that. How shall we that are dead to sin live or continue any longer therein? Know ye not that many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death. We have washed away sin. We are dead to skin, sin. Verse 22, being then made free from sin and become servants of God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end is everlasting life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, that is eternal life through Christ. 
our Lord. We have freedom from sin. We have, 2 Peter chapter 1, escape the corruption that is in the world through lust because we have been given great and exceeding promises. For after we have escaped the pollutions of the world, it's chapter 2, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we can go and entangle ourselves therein, and it can be worse than the beginning, but we can escape the pollutions and the corruptions of the world. We can be free from sin. We could be united as citizens in the kingdom of God. Now, that's a wonderful blessing that anyone can have. It's not just us. Well, we're in the Christ and nobody else can get in. We barred the doors. No. Jesus sacrificed himself for the world. America enjoys great freedom, so not everybody can, and that's just the way it is. But everybody can have freedom of sin. And we can all be united in that freedom. United we stand, finally this morning, by the promise of God. Look with me, if you will, verse 29. And if you be Christ, and you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That promise that goes all the way back to Genesis 3, when God promised Satan that he would destroy him. And that while Satan might bruise his heel, that the seed of woman, that singular seed, would crush his head in defeat. And we see that on the cross. We see that promise reiterated in Genesis chapter 12 when he promised to Abraham that in thee all nations of the earth shall be blessed that the Messiah would come through him. That great promise, that promise of God, that promise we still have today, that promise that was given on the day of Pentecost and that first gospel sermon. Peter's preaching and he gets to a point in his sermon where he's talking about Christ and he says, this same Jesus... Whom you have crucified, God hath made both Lord and Christ. And that caused those people there to stop and think, and they were pricked, cut deeply to their hearts, and they said, they just stopped Peter. And they said to him and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? We have crucified the Son of God. Peter, how do we fix this? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as our Lord our God shall call. That promise is extended to us today, that freedom of sin, that uniting in Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, Peter says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Jesus, uh, Jesus our Lord. According as His divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness, through the knowledge of Him that calls us to glory and virtue, whereby are giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that we might be partakers of the divine nature, because we have escaped, right, through the sacrifice of Christ, the corruption that is in this world, we can obtain that promise of God. That promise of God is that all can have a heavenly home. And I hope that you've noticed, I, I put a word in here, can, not will. Not all will have a heavenly home, but all can have a heavenly home. Anyone can be in Christ. Anyone can have freedom from sin. Anyone can be the children of God. Not everyone will have a heavenly home. Not everyone will become a child of God. Not everyone will be free from their sin, but we can. All can have a heavenly home, and I hope that describes where you're at this morning. If not, I hope you think about it. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8, Paul says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, because he'd been faithful. He'd run his race, he'd fought the fight, he'd finished his course. And there's laid up for him a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge shall give me in that day, not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what Jesus says. All that love His appearing, every single one of us this morning, around this, around this town, around this state, around this nation, around this world, can have a heavenly home. We can all be united in Christ. We don't have to fuss and fight. We can be brethren united and together united we stand it's important for us to remember that
that as citizens in God's kingdom, we can be united. Have you been added to the kingdom of God? Have you been added to the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Have you obeyed the gospel? I hope that you have. If you're here this morning and you haven't, please, please think about it. The world is a very divided place, but inside the church you can have unity and togetherness. You can be a, group, a part of a group of believers who's all pulling the same way, going in the same direction, and we're trying to get the world to go with us. It's an uphill struggle, and not many will join, but boy, we can sure try. Pulling together as common citizens, united and together. Are you here this morning? Are you a faithful follower of Christ? Have you, been, have you lost the way? Have you lost the zeal? We get caught up in the world sometimes. We get caught up in the way the world is and what the world does. and It takes us away from where we need to be. I had the privilege here recently to baptize several new folks into Christ. And I love the way they smile when they come up out of that water. They are, man, they are on fire. But sometimes when we've been a Christian for six days or six weeks or six months or six years, we lose that fire. We lose that determination. Instead of walking in the light or running in the light, we're just loitering in the light. You know what I mean? We're there. We need to get some traction. Maybe this, this political season has just got you down. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just done talking to people. I'm done trying to be friendly with that. Don't be. Maybe you get caught up with folks. Don't be. Be faithful. Be united with Christ. Have the hope that endures, the peace that passes understanding, those things that keep us ready and able always to give an answer to the people who ask us, a reason that is hope that is in us and we can preach the truth in love. Christians don't lose that. It's easy to because not everybody feels and thinks and acts the way that we do. If you're here this morning you're not a Christian and you want this peace and you want this understanding, yeah, I just want to be happy. I want to be part of a group that's going to heaven and wants me to be there with them. And you can come and obey the gospel this morning. If you're here this morning and you're a Christian, and you've let the cares and concerns of this world draw you away, then I ask that you come, even as we stand and as we sing.